Hi there. Okay, so we're into the final video of key area seven. We're almost done with unit two uh, of higher human biology. And this one is on cholesterol. So we'll be looking at the two cholesterol carriers, HDL and LDL, how their ratios affect cholesterol concentration in the blood and the regulation of cholesterol. Okay, so cholesterol, you've probably heard about it in life. It's on loads of adverts for things like butter and various other things. Um, but the idea is we are generally told to avoid cholesterol in food, but actually cholesterol is crucial to us surviving. It's important in a lot of the processes we do. So although we're told to avoid cholesterol, you still need a bit of it to survive because it's really important for things such as hormone formation, uh, the osmotic balance within the body, production of bile for digestion and construction of cell membranes, amongst other things. But basically, cholesterol, really, really important for us actually to, for us to actually survive because all of our body cells are capable of producing cholesterol for use, but the liver can produce 25% of all of the body's cholesterol. Okay, what we're focusing on there is the cholesterol is a big producer of cholesterol okay and we definitely need it basically if we do not have cholesterol you're getting no new cells you're not being able to digest fats uh, because you don't get any bile and um, your osmotic balance goes out so you might end up with not enough water in certain organs too much water in others and you know the importance of hormones we've stressed this before okay foods that contain high levels of saturated fat as well as um high in cholesterol these can contribute to high cholesterol levels so both high saturated fat and actually eating a lot of cholesterol type stuff surprisingly is going to increase the cholesterol in your blood there is a big list of foods that contain a lot of cholesterol i'm not going to read through it okay so cholesterol and the transport of cholesterol is important for you to know about so the actual molecule of cholesterol is quite reactive itself so basically it is not good to have it just floating around in your blood where it can just do whatever it wants um, for example, it might stick to an artery block, which is bad because it blocks your arteries, just like all the adverts say, um, which is a very bad thing. So to avoid this happening, cholesterol can be transported by two carriers. And these carriers are known as HDL and LDL. So high density lipoprotein and low density lipoprotein. Now, HDL is the good one. Try and think of it as almost like happy DL, something like that. It's a good one. Try and remember that. OK, now HDL's job is to take cholesterol from body cells to the liver to get rid of it and get it out of your body. OK, most people in the world have less HDL than LDL. And that is good because remember, we just went into all of the reasons why you need cholesterol. If you have more cholesterol eliminators in your body than cholesterol makers, then you're going to end up overall cholesterol negative, which is bad. OK, so most people have less LDL than HDL. But HDL is useful for if you have too much cholesterol in your body, it's useful for getting rid of it, which is why we consider it to be the good carrier. Okay. LDL is kind of the opposite. It's the bad carrier, so to speak, mm. um, because it carries cholesterol from the liver cells back to the body. So it takes the cholesterol from the liver to places that you might not necessarily want it to be, again, i.e. in an artery where it can build up. Um, but it does this so that cells can use the cholesterol. So for the various different things like making hormones and your um, cell membrane synthesis and things like that. So it is important that it has this job. It is important that something can take the cholesterol from the liver to the body cells. But the problem is when the cells already have enough cholesterol, but LDL still bringing it, it doesn't really know what to do. So it just dumps it in the nearest artery, which is why mm. it builds up. And that's when you get cholesterol build up in your arteries, which is a bad thing. OK, now the way a cell can stop itself getting too much cholesterol, again, doesn't have a brain. It's not smart or anything like that. Um, so it works using receptors. So when LDL normally arrives at the cell membrane, what it does is it binds to receptors which drag the molecule inside. You can kind of see a diagram of how that's happening. So part of the membrane actually drags itself inside with those receptors. When the receptors have the LDL inside, normally, under normal conditions, the receptors will then be sent back to the membrane to say, OK, go back and get more cholesterol. However, you can keep going with it. if the cell has already got enough cholesterol, the receptors don't get sent back to the membrane. OK, and what this does is it prevents the cell from absorbing more LDL. Think of it like the LDL is a pizza delivery person and basically the door stops getting answered at some point inside the house somebody says stop answering the door we have enough pizza thank you very much and so you've got a person standing there with the pizza going what do i do with this there's never too much pizza and they just throw it away in the corridor that's what they do they basically throw it down on the floor of the corridor in an absolute mess 
Okay, so this prevents the cell from absorbing more LDL because the receptors aren't there to say, welcome, come into the cell and be cholesterol stuff. Okay, um, because the LDL has nowhere to go because it's just sitting there going, well, I'm here and nobody wants me. It um, deposits the cholesterol in the arteries and then goes and fetches more cholesterol to bring to cells because that's its job. OK, so again, pizza delivery person standing there. No one answers the door. They empty out the pizza box into the corridor and then go and get another pizza to try and deliver again. It's a bit like my dog. He likes to bring your tennis ball, drop it at your feet, then go find another one and drop it at your feet, expecting you to throw it. When all that happens is you gain 12 tennis balls and a dog <laughs> that keeps coming back with more. <laughs> right. Now, what this means is it works out kind of like this. This picture is a metaphor for kind of what's going on inside the arteries of a person who eats too much cholesterol or produces too much cholesterol inside their cells. A person with more LDL will build up cholesterol in the bloodstream. It just more of it will get dumped in the arteries. A person with more HDL will reduce the amount of cholesterol in the blood because the HDL is carting away to the liver for disposal. So consequences of having high blood cholesterol. Now there are various different consequences, but these are the kind of main ones. So first of all, coming back to that idea of arthromas. So they are made up of cholesterol. This is one of the main things. And there's also the calcium and the other things, but cholesterol was one of the main things in an arthroma. And again, arthromas mean arthrosclerosis. So high cholesterol means your chances of getting arthrosclerosis is much, much higher. Uh, cholesterol deposits can also appear in the eyes, just as the picture can see here, and they are also linked to the cause of gallstones. So high cholesterol means you're more likely to have gallstones, which apparently are utterly horrible things to pass. Mm, can you pass them? I didn't know Don't you could. I, I think you can. I know kidney stones you can oh, pass. Oh, maybe I'm saying kidney stones. Oh, all I know is gallstones are absolute oh. flipping agony. Yeah, no, I might be thinking the wrong thing. Uh, but yeah, still horrible. Not nice. Okay, so to improve the HDL, how do you improve your HDL to LDL ratio? Now, the HDL to LDL ratio is talking, you know, again, normally there's less HDL than LDL. So let's say the ratio is normally, I don't know, 0 0.5 to 3. That's, I could have done better there. I could have done 1 to 6. Okay, so let's say it's 1 to 6. We want to improve that ratio to say to be, I don't know, 2 to 3. So ways that we can do that are exercise exercise raises the amount of hdl in the blood we do not know why not a clue but we do know that exercising people raise hdl levels replacing saturated fats with unsaturated fats in diets will reduce the cholesterol decrease the amount of ldl in your blood and it does increase the hdl as well this is why you've got people like flora saying you should switch from butter to us because we are unsaturated fat and we will help lower cholesterol that's what it's trying to do and then reducing fat in the diet overall is the, the best strategy for it. So really the best ones are increase exercise, reduce fat in your diet, which is overall good advice for cardiovascular disease anyway. General health. We're also ignoring the fact that your ratio made no sense. Sorry. Um, so final thing is this thing's called statins. So sta statins, basically a drug that you can take to inhibit the production of cholesterol in the liver. So cholesterol is built using an enzyme. You don't need to know the name of it, but the name is there. And the kind of main thing you just need to know about them really is that first sentence. Mm -hmm. So the idea that they inhibit the production of cholesterol in the liver. Um, but statins are competitive inhibitors of um, this enzyme that builds cholesterol. Um, so obviously if they have a competitive inhibitor that is going to be competitive inhibition so it is going to competitively inhibit that enzyme so stop the enzyme doing its job so if the enzyme can't do its job it can't build cholesterol so therefore no extra production of cholesterol. Okay now we're thinking of that question at the bottom why would it is it better that they're competitive and not non-competitive remember this idea of non-competitive enzyme inhibition tends to be permanent we don't want to completely block that enzyme why not? Because we do still want some cholesterol to be made. So a competitive inhibitor allows some cholesterol production still to go ahead. OK, it just reduces overall the amount of cholesterol that's produced. So to summarize, we've got cholesterol is a component of the cell membranes. That's its most important function, but there are other ones and it's made in the liver primarily. So HDL, which is the good one, it carries cholesterol from cells to the liver for breakdown. LDL carries cholesterol from the liver to cells for use. Cholesterol regulation, so cells with enough cholesterol uh, do not send. That, that doesn't seem like it reads oh, very Oh, it should well. be do not send. Do not send, I thought so. Mm -hmm. uh, so cells with enough cholesterol do not send cholesterol receptors to the membrane surface. And then statins prevent production of cholesterol. So that is the final video on uh, cardiovascular disease. Uh, so there's been those four videos, atherosclerosis, thrombosis, deep, nope, 
uh, peripheral, peripheral vascular bit. disease and cholesterol. So those four sections. The last key area is uh, yeah. diabetes. Blood glucose. Is, yeah, blood diabetes. glucose and obesity is those two parts of it. So we'll be looking at diabetes, we'll be looking at obesity. There's another formula in there that you have to remember, but we are almost done with unit two and you should be looking for significant revision towards your prelim at the moment, if you are lucky enough to have one. Okay, so we will see you in key area eight.